Um, so I'm excited to be here. My name is Kelt, as you heard, and I'm going to talk about variational learning to rank. And so before I get started, just to remind you that Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Um, purchases of any of our products should do it only on the publicly displayed products and not what I'm going to talk about in this talk. And with that out of the way, so the goal is we want to discover the prior affinity for, of, the, of users and rank accordingly. And so if you look at learning to rank, it's about just finding the optimal rankings. Variational inference is about optimizing for a probability distribution. And the idea of comp uh, combining the two is that we want to optimize for, for rankings that are both good for the user, but also explore what are actually the best rankings that we want to, to, uh, to give our users. And so with that out of the way, here's the outline of the talk. So I'm going to briefly introduce Salesforce Commerce Cloud so you have a context of what what are we developing this for? I'm going to introduce learning to rank and variational, variational inference that hopefully some of you know about already. I'm going to talk about our ranking architecture and how we're changing that to encompassing this new way of doing things. And then going into variational learning to rank and ending up with learnings and conclusions. So Salesforce Commerce Cloud, here are we in numbers. And I'm not going to talk you through all those numbers. You can read it if you like. Just say that Einstein, it's our machine learning unit. We infuse um, machine learning into this commerce platform. So it's both for the, the shoppers and for the merchants. So for the shoppers, it'll be recommendations, it'll be search and so forth. For merchants, it's gaining insights about their shoppers and the sites and also helping them making their jobs easier. So to the real um, topic here, so learning to rank and variational inference, those are both two big topics, so I'm not going to give them a full justice. I'm going to just kind of remind you if you know it already, and if you don't, then give you some pointers to what to look into. So first, very, uh, learning to rank. So it's about, we want to optimize for, for better rankings, um, for our recommendations, and not just try to to predict the clicks. So you can look at as a point wise recommendations or you can do pair wise comparisons or you can do list wise comparisons. For the list wise comparisons, some of the, the normal optimization criteria are NDCG, which is um, normalized discounted cumulative gain and there's MAP, um, mean average precision and a number of other ones. And so you optimize for this criteria, and that gives you better rankings. And so some popular algorithms that you'll probably find in the literature are RankNet and LambdaMart. There's a bunch of other ones. Just to, to kind of conclude, compared to click models, what's been found is that learn to rank algorithms perform better in terms of making rankings, and that gives you better outcomes for like happier customers, more revenue, and so forth. Variational inference. So instead of just doing point estimates, we're like doing the proper Bayesian ways of we want to reproduce the probability distribution. We want to estimate the, the posterior distribution. And that's a very hard problem. The variational inference, we do it by using the KL divergence to say regularize or compare the, the data distribution that we want to to reproduce with the, the model reproduction, uh, reproduction. And what makes this so neat is that we can use the reprioritization trick to incorporate this in deep learning um, models. And so there's been a lot of recent usage of that. So you have variational order encoders for collaborative filtering as an example. And just in general, people are doing a lot of interesting work on that. And that's what we want to apply. But before I go into it and just give you a sense of, of how our ranking architecture looks like. So this is a very basic system that you probably are most familiar with, but I'm just going to kind of briefly talk you through the different boxes. So on the left, we start with the customer. They interact with the system. So they will query for something they're interested in in the storefront. We go to the top first, and there's a user activity 
we have that whole tracking mechanism, and that's then fed into our ranker as the user context. If we follow further along in the top, then we of course store all that data in our activity logs, and that's then fed into our learner, where we, in a batch process, learn product features and model weights. If you go to the, the bottom, so go back to the storefront and down with the query, then we query in our index that's been learned from indexing the, the catalog and this index, uh, the query, um, we query the products in the index and that's then fed up to the ranker. And so the ranker then takes these different inputs and it tries to produce the best ranks for some some measure that we want to optimize for. So if we zoom in now on the ranker, then the traditional ranker system will be looking like something, something like this, where you have the user context and the, the product features, the model weights coming in to the left and the different products you want to score. And then you score them with some function that emits out the, the scores and you then just sort them and here goes your ranks. Now the system we are employing, we put in an extra step into this. So the score function, instead of creating just a single point estimate, it will, it will give you a distribution, so given as mean variance, and then you just sample from this distribution, and that sample is then what you're sorting by. So every time you, you rank the same product, it will be slightly different because we are we're sampling from the distribution. So let's look into to what we put in the score, and that's where variational learning to rank has to play. And so we are just doing pairwise comparisons here. So if you look at your query lock, you compare every product and you want them, uh, you want to, to optimize so that the better products are at the top. And you look at, you, you estimate your affinity of the displaced product from subsequent behavior. There's been a lot of discussion about how you do that. It's a whole science in itself, but just imagine you do that somehow. And now the question is, if you remove the positional bias, would product four out, um, outperform, for instance, product one? That's what we want our algorithm to figure out. And so we need a score that's able to disambiguate the, the product affinity from the positional bias. And here's on a high level, the architecture that, that can do that. So on the left-hand side, we have the, the product affinity um, um, function where it takes in the, the product features and the user context. So for this side, what would be mostly relevant would be for instance, the, the, the history of this user on this site. And then we use some, some nonlinear function to create an estimate of what is the distribution that describes the, the user's affinity to this product. On the right-hand side, we have the positional bias where it just knows about the positional features, so for instance, the rank, and of course, also the, the user context. And again, we have some nonlinear functions, so that could be any kind of neural network, um, and then outcomes now, a distribution given as a mean and a variance. And so using the reprimandization trick, we then sample from both sides, so we just take um, a, a, some uh, a sample from a normal distribution, we then expand it out with the standard deviation from the variance, and we then move it or shift it with our mean. So that will then create a score for either side, and we then combine them together. Now, how, to, how do we fit that into what I showed you before? And so see that on the left-hand side, that's where we have the affinity to the product, and that's the side we will use for, for ranking in our ranker. So that's the score where the positional bias, that's just to take away the positional bias when we're doing the training of the function. So how are we going to optimize this? So we can write up again the score as a combination of the affinity to the product for this user and the positional bias with, where we use the rank and the user context. We then have the probability um, of the product X is better than product Y. We take the sigmoid of the scores to get that. And then we fit it that, that into a cross entropy where we weight given the affinity to respectively product X and product Y. But then we add on the, the KL divergence so that we can 
optimized for the distribution and not just the point estimate. And so writing up the, the problem like this, we can use all the, the normal methods for optimizing given stochastic gradient descent and making our neural network in whatever way we please. Um, but we can start off the process um, using good estimations of the different final transition in, in Bayesian format so that we ensure that we, we are normalizing it properly, uh, regularizing it properly, so going from views to clicks to baskets to takeouts. And we can apply inverse propensity scoring to de-bias the data. Um, so you can see that in banded nets with the SNPs method, and there's a, a lot of other methods that will feed very nicely into this uh, formalism. And what I showed you here was you know, before was just using pairwise combina combinations, but instead we could also do um, full query optimizations where we gain some efficiency. So this method is currently being implemented and tested within the, the Comstein Einstein system. Um, I don't have any uh, results to show. It will hopefully come soon, and I'm happy to share at that point if I get the approval from the higher up. Um, but I can still talk a little bit about some of the, the learnings and conclusions that we have so far. So as always, start simple. Um, we can use the, the Bayesian estimations from the final transition. So similar to the techniques that you use in bandwidth models, those will fit very well into this. And when we go out and talk with people about it, compared to doing a normal randomization scheme, this is something that merchants really understand. Similar to when you're doing bandits, you're not just shuffling things around completely randomly. You're saying we have an uncertainty about how good this product is, and we're going to vary things uh, that score more on that product, whereas the things that we, we know very well, we're not going to, to shuffle them around so much. Um, however, this non-deterministic behavior creates a more need for debugging uh, of the system by your engineer. So it's a little more work to be done there. So in the end, um, to conclude, so variational learning to rank, we, we think it's a, an, a promising new approach to, to exploratory ranking systems that, of course, still to be, to be shown how how good it is to compare to, to other systems, and we're working on that. Um, we can luckily start it with just using these Bayesian factors, but there's a lot of future research to be done to, to really prove the technique. I mentioned some of the techniques in the talk already, so propensity scoring for, for deep biasing, we can use full query optimizations, um, and we can like, there's endless possibilities on how do you find out what is the best neural network architecture. So uh, a neural architecture search will be an interesting thing to carry out. So please uh, reach out to me with, with questions. Like, I'm looking forward to hear what you have in, in a second from now. And please come to me afterwards. I'm excited to, to hear about your ideas to, to how we can make this a viable method in their own. Thank you. So we have a couple minutes for questions. Um, I don't know if anyone has anything here. Um, one question I had is, how well does this method scale up um, in terms of, I noticed there's going to be at least possibly two steps of sampling, uh, one for the pointwise uh, uh, point items, and as well for the uh, sampling from the, the Gaussian there. So I was just wondering, I was just wondering about the scalability properties. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, like, it's not we're implementing that and then putting it in. It's not something we face. So when we're doing the sample, like, bear in mind that we're not really sampling a lot of, of times from distribution. For each product, we have two values, the mean and the variance. And we just say, get, take one number from the Gaussian distribution, multiply with some <laughs> the, like the standard deviation, then add a shift, which is two operations, that's all we're doing. So everything else was completely outwashing what we're adding in complexity in the rank itself. But there are other steps of this that will 
add on in complexity, like how do we chain this? Like, is it much more costly compared to doing it normally? And I'll come back to, do we get something out of doing the exploration? Excellent, thank you. Yeah. My question is related to the uh, variational inference. So I thought, so what's the actual benefit you can get from variational inference instead of just like training a learning to rank model? So how do you make use of the actual stuff get, getting from like a variational inference? Um, so we're using it to, to regularize the distribution. If you just used a, a loss function where you didn't put that in, mm -hmm. then it would not put in the same, uh, it would not try to expand out what is the uncertainty, it would just try to optimize for the best of all, like just making that uncertainty very, very small. So it's to, to push it back into to, uh, regularizing it to, to stay with what we think is our prior distribution and not make it go too far away from some what is the data distribution we normally see. That's the goal, to, to make it a generative function similar to what you have in variational order encoders. So you're trying to get, uh, my understanding is you're trying to get the error bar for each of your estimate, is that right? Kind of like, like say if you have an estimation on some of the uh, predict score, you have some score and you want to get a variance of that score, is that the reason? That's correct, yeah. Maybe, did I answer your, your question yeah, correctly? Yeah, 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 thanks. You're welcome.